On this episode, winds wreak havoc before I get a brief mainsail induction from John. Don't pull on the pole, the pole will come out. We then depart Gary's anchorage and sail north to Bundaberg, where we provision and prepare to take you to our first spot on the Great Barrier Reef. We are so excited for this one and a whole heap of amazing episodes coming your way. If you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining our crew. Here's the quick rundown. Sick of COVID lockdowns, I quit my job, packed up our Melbourne apartment, and with my boyfriend John, purchased a yacht called Takana. Some people called us crazy because we only had a few weeks sailing experience, but somehow we managed to sail her from Melbourne, 1500 nautical miles up the east coast of Australia to Queensland, where we are now, and we're about to descend on the Great Barrier Reef. This is Gary's anchorage. On this trip, we didn't get to see any dingoes. We heard dingoes. The midges absolutely demolished me to the point where I had to have an antihistamine. I went for a walk on Fraser Island while John manned the boat. This is only the third or fourth time that we have anchored up and so we just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to just get pushed into the rocks or anything like that. So John stayed on board. Right now, you wouldn't know it, but we're about to be lashed with some strong winds. So we've anchored off literally the biggest sand island in the world for protection. Some know this place as Fraser Island, but a few weeks ago, it was renamed Gari, its original indigenous name for thousands of years, which means paradise. It's located off the east coast of Australia, known for being the only sand island in the world where complete forests grow. The perfect place to seek shelter from the winds we're bracing for. Oh, look how close they are. I suppose the thing is they don't react the same way they react differently to current and the wind, that's why they don't swing the same way. I mean, the current should be running in, so it looks like the powerboat's more affected by the current and the and the yacht's more affected by the wind, but usually it's be the other way around. Isn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, we were having our own little dramas. The first warning came from the anchor alarm. Takana's backside was getting close to the bank. Always gives me anxiety, hey? Making us nervous. Can you turn on the instrument? Yeah. We thought we might be dragging. What's the depth? What does it say? We weren't dragging and had 3.3 metres under the keel, despite the winds swinging us around. How many metres away do you think we are from shore? Oh, it's been an hour. We have to come back in. Gary's anchorage turned out to be a nice, safe, secure, protected anchorage while we had some strong winds and, and rain come through. Okay, that is disgusting. Here's my little progress. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that crustiness is just the um, antiseptic powder. It's not actually bad. <laughs> so we've got a pretty big sail today. Perfect conditions. Just waiting on the tides now. Currently going from a low to high tide, so we need to make sure that we have enough depth under the keel. We'll be sailing the Great Sandy Strait, which separates mainland from Gari. It's 45 miles in length. Every time we sail, John always looks after the boom and mast situation, and I've never been out here before, so ooh. John's just gonna show me how it's done today. I haven't really done it, I think, because of my height. <laughs> okay, pole topper. Yep, there you go. Thanks. You know what to do with that. Uh, so you know what to do. I think I do. No, you put it on here, yeah? No, you can't get it wrong. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah, see, I haven't done it before. And while securing the spinnaker halyard, John also wanted to update you guys on the leaky eyebrow window. Um, what I did, see I, I've taped this one over this one. It should be the other way around. It's because the water's just going straight under. But really? Got a water seal. $1,500 was spent to fix that window. 
Still leaks. It's really heartbreaking. That has to be pulled out and reseeded. See, and this is the problem. You put tape on and water gets under it. Now you've got water sitting like on the seals, you know? John was just saying the reason why they didn't do a very good job is because they didn't want to take the whole window out because they were concerned that they were going to break it. It might break and they don't have them in Australia. It'd be a long delay for us waiting for anyone to arrive from France. So eventually the window will have to come out completely. Everything's clean to be cleaned up and then it resealed and resealed. Yeah. It's oh. a small minor inconvenience comfort item, which is low priority. Really? I think that's pretty high priority. It is. <laughs> For comfort items, it's top priority. So back to why we started filming. So what's next? Halyard. Halyard. This one. Main Halyard. Oh, you pulled it down now. That's cute. No excuses. Well done. And I just pull it. You gotta unclip it. <laughs> no, here you go. No, I can actually see if I can do it. I just need this. Pull them up and then out. That's it. You need the one on the other side too. Right. Careful what you hang on to because... No, no, don't hold on to the pole. Don't pull on the pole. The pole will come out. Okay, spider I'm pig. Break something. Spider pig. pig. Spider pig does whatever a spider pig does. <laughs> oh, sugar. Hey, Jill. Okay. Hold on. It's almost painful to watch. Let's just say I'm never doing this again. Ooh. Ooh. Like ever. What'd you do? Oh. You alright? No, I'm alright. What'd you do? It just really hurts. Did you land funny? Yeah. It's okay, I think we'll leave that job for you. It's really sore. Oh. Just on the arch of that Was side. That yeah, I think so. I think it's just a bit sore at the moment. Good job with sailing the wood. <laughs> I'm glad that you told me how to do that four weeks into our sailing trip. This is gonna come Oh yeah, the preventer. Well, it's not, I don't know what it's called. Fake shift preventer, potentially. The sun is shining, beautiful winds, and the seas are going to be flat, only 0.2 of a metre supposedly. So these are ideal sailing conditions. Let's go, let's do it. And that was the last happy dance there ever was. Where are you going? Bundaberg's that way. 12 hours away, in fact. As soon as the weather permitted, we all sailed out of the Great Sandy Strait, accompanied by new friends. You know, that's what we love about sailing. It's the people you meet along the way. We'll be sailing into the night, travelling 75 nautical miles north all the way to Bundaberg. We're going to get some supplies before we take you to an incredible reef. We got in at about, what, three o'clock in the morning and we anchored just over there near the rock walls. So unfortunately we don't have much footage because it was all at night, but it was a beautiful evening. And we had both sails up um, throughout the course of the trip. That was the first time we sailed with both sails up at night. So we are about to catch the bus into town. We have had hardly any sleep. We got in at 3 a.m. and then we had to wake up at 8. We're gonna catch the bus to town because we need a provision. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to go to a supermarket. Every time we get into a pen, it's really nerve wracking because we haven't done it that many times and we don't have a bounce roster, as you guys know. Oh. Get some, uh, get some Beautiful. I almost 
I've got my bag. This is my little roly poly bag. John hates it. He thinks it's embarrassing, but I think it's extremely practical. At most marinas in Australia, you need to check in. And while walking to the bus stop, another boaty couple offered us a ride into town. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, you're all right. Turns out their last yacht was called Jakana, a similar name to our yacht, Takana. We went around the world in that one. Oh, wow. For nine and a half years, and then, wow. and then we've now... It's a North Shore 46. Oh, OK. And now wow. we've got a bloody chugger. So your boat, current boat's name is Dingo. Oh, OK. Bundaberg was established around 150 years ago in 1870, well before the Federation of Australia in 1901. It's most famously known though for its Bundaberg rum, founded here in 1888. The distillery survived a fire in the 1930s that turned the Burnett into a river of rum. Today, it distills 25,000 gallons of rum a year, and the city is home to 70,000 people and has kept some of its historic treasures to this day. Well, that was expensive. Yeah. Are you ready to catch them whiting? We purchased a heap of fishing gear and some snorkeling gear because we are about to take you to... I'm feeling really unco. Lady Musgrave Island. Wow, this spot is incredible. <laughs> but we do have to navigate our way through the bombies. It's pretty narrow, so you just have to keep an eye out. Big masses of coral that stick out of the sea. This is a little bit nerve-wracking. I feel like everything's sort of in my hands for us it not is. to hit. Yeah, it is, basically. Yeah, and that, that makes me nervous. I know. This is what happens when marinas don't have wheelbarrows. Now, to give this context, Oh dear lord. I have to show you how many bags we had to transport to Takana. But my gosh, there are some good people in this world. A bloke on his bike saw us struggling and took it upon himself to pick up one of our heavy bags and ride it to the gate. What a legend. Paying it forward is really something special. So thank you, Good Samaritan, for making our day. Oh, he's trying to help you. Aww. Oh. Thanks, thank babe. you so much. Really <laughs> you need a, you need a car. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mate, there's a lot of weight in there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Stronger than mine. Cheers. <laughs> How nice is that? After living on board our floating home for about a month now, I have a bit of a routine when it comes to provisioning and repacking our fridge and freezer. First, I take all our old food out, I check the dates and clean the fridge, and then start repacking. So it's a job that takes me about an hour or more to complete. John, because we're in Bundaberg, I thought, we could drink some Bundaberg rum. No, some Bundaberg pineapple and coconut sparkling drink. That's not rum. So each time lapse goes for 15 minutes and I have done two time lapses and there's still so much to do. Um, I've got all the fruit and veggies in though now. I think I went overboard. I definitely went overboard this time. Oh, what have I done? Another thing that we have to do is we don't want to accumulate a heap of rubbish when we're out on the water because then we don't really have anywhere to store it until we go back to land where we can put it in the bin. So what I do when I provision, and I'm sure all of you guys who have boats do this as well, is throw away all the extra plastic and rubbish that is unnecessary. For example, these noodles are in another two packets. Everyone knows how to use noodles, so I just take it out of this plastic packet and throw this plastic packet in the bin. 
Coming up next, we sail to the second southernmost island in the Great Barrier Reef, a spectacular coral cay called Lady Musgrave Island. So we're going to do a little safety group, aren't we? This is the first time we're heading out to a reef, so it's going to be tricky, a new experience for us. 